I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm at Hotel Grace on a terrace on a cold winter day, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I met you just outside. Where are you from? I'm from the United States of America. And what's your name? My name's Caroline. When did you hear the first time, Caroline, about Medjugorje? And what did you think at the time? So I'm a convert to the Catholic faith. Oh, wow. I converted about... I have to listen to that story. Right, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I, you know, I converted about uh, 34 years ago. Why? I married a man who was a cradle Catholic. Mm -hmm. and maybe take this close to you. Okay, That's better. Yeah? Okay. I married Hold a it, maybe. gentleman that yeah. was a cradle Catholic. Yeah. And um, I never thought anything of it. Yeah. And then when we had our kid, our first son, yeah. we were in England then. We were living in England, in London then. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted him to go to a good school. Mm -hmm. And the only good schools were the Catholic schools. Mm -hmm. And I went to try and get him into the Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And they said, you have to be a Catholic. I said, okay, I'm I'll, I'll be a Catholic. Mm -hmm. Not just be a Catholic, but you have to be known to be in mass, the priest has to recognize you. When you put in your application, you, uh -huh. you put it in with your photograph uh -huh. of the family. Uh -huh. And the priest has to look at that application and say, oh, I know this family, they come to mass. Mm -hmm. That's how I got into the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. So I just went to get my son into school, mm -hmm. but guess what? Mm -hmm. The Lord had a plan. Mm -hmm. And I became Catholic, I converted. I joined a charismatic prayer group. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I became a Catholic. Wow, Eva, you touched somehow deep inside. Oh, was the yes. pivotal point? Yes. Like situation? The, the pivotal point for me was attending a healing mass mm -hmm. by Father Peter Mary Rookie. Mm -hmm. He's passed on now, uh -huh. but I was living in England then. Mm -hmm. And he came to England and he had one of those healing masses. Mm -hmm. And when they go around and they anoint you with the oil, mm -hmm. I was laid down in the spirits. And mm -hmm. it was just a very, very deep spiritual experience that's very personal and very difficult to describe, to describe unless you've been through it. Uh -huh. But I think the seeds of Medjugorje were planted in me 30-something years ago. Why? What were the seeds? I was just, I used to listen to the, um, I used to have videos then, mm -hmm. BRCs then, mm -hmm. and I used to listen to um, the apparitions. Mm -hmm. I used to listen up to Garabandel, documentaries mm -hmm. on Garabandal, mm -hmm. Lords, Fatima, mm -hmm. but Medjugorje just always seems to be at the forefront of my, my, my being. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And so when I moved to the States in uh, 1999 with my family from um, the UK, mm -hmm. um, Medjugorje kept coming. Just every time I pray, every time I go anywhere, it was always Medjugorje, Medjugorje. But there was always something in the way. Mm -hmm. I could never come. I don't know why. There was always one excuse. Mm -hmm. So this year, I tried to get on a pilgrimage. The timing for the pilgrimages were always, the group pilgrimage were always not right for me. So I said, you know what? I'm just going. Mm -hmm. I'm just going. And I'm here all by myself. Wow, the first time in your life. The first time in my life. And, and how I, is the experience? So I didn't come here to see a miracle or mm -hmm. see Our Lady. Mm -hmm. If that happens, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. I came here to be filled with the love, mm -hmm. to empty myself, mm -hmm. and, and just to just pour out my heart to the Lord our God and to Our Lady. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to fill me with love to increase my faith, to help me grow in love and in beauty yeah. for the Holy Trinity, for Christ, for Our Lady. But what happened, I arrived on Friday, mm -hmm. and today's Monday, right? Yeah. Saturday, you know, I'm not with any tour, tour guide or anything, so I have no mm -hmm. clue what's going on. So the first mass I go to is all Croatian and I have no clue, but I sit through it and I enjoy it and I don't know what they're saying, but that's fine, I sit through it. So the second day I start to get more information about where the English masses are held and I start to just do my own little inquiries. Mm -hmm. And so Sunday, mm -hmm. they say the English mass is at 10 o'clock on the, in the chapel. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how. I went to four masses on Sunday. Wow. Uh -huh. 
I don't know how that happened. Uh -huh. So I got up in the morning and I said, okay, mass is at 10 o'clock. But I'm just going to get up early. Mm -hmm. No, mass is at 12, sorry, on Sunday. English mass at 12. Exactly. So I'm going to get up early and I'm just going to go and just wander around. Mm -hmm. So I go and then the hotel I, I am in is just next to St. James's mm -hmm. um, Church. So I walk into the yard in St. James's Church and I see that, oh, the speakers are on, mass is going on inside, mm -hmm. but I'm outside, so I sit through that mass. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the left and I join, go and look for where the English Mass has been held, mm -hmm. but it hasn't started yet. Mm -hmm. There's already a Mass going on. So mm -hmm. I just walk into that Mass mm -hmm. sat down. and I sat down and I, and I get the Eucharist and I part of that Mass. And then immediately after that Mass, the English Mass starts and I'm like, oh, I might as well stay. Mm -hmm. So another Mass, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> next thing I know, um, <laughs> I also come back in the even, evening and I attend the evening mass. Evening mass. Uh -huh. And evening mass is all Croatian, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I sit through that and the rosary. So that's four masses in one day. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it till I got home, till I got to the hotel room last night. I was like, wait a minute. I went to mass four times yesterday. Uh -huh. And how was that? How, uh, how would you describe the experience? You know, it's very difficult to explain what, what you experience here. I mean, I've listened to people that have been interviewed and, I, I, and I, you have to be here to understand. It's, it's almost beautiful. like the peace, the love, the joy, the blessings, it comes at you in a very vivid and alive way. And I know I'm going to, I already, I've only been, I still have a week here. Mm -hmm but I'm loving every day of it. And I'm finding myself this peace, this, this beauty. There's so much peace here, I can't explain it. It's almost like my soul has opened up mm -hmm. and it's being caressed by the Holy Spirit. My body, my life, my soul, my spirit is being enveloped by the love of Our Lady. And I'm just embracing it and loving it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm just taking every day one day at a time. You will see because the, the they say here when you come here Our Lady takes over and she guides you where you That's like, like how did we meet now? Poor coincidence. Exactly. No? <laughs> exactly. So you know I was I go on YouTube and I'm seeing this guy called Tom interviewing people I'm like oh <laughs> you know I had no clue you were anywhere near the hotel. So that's interesting. Pure, pure God incident. Pure no? incident. Uh -huh. I've been to the Apparition Hill. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? That was beautiful. I was <laughs> in awe. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, the first thing I thought of was I never realized how steep and how rocky that terrain was. And I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, you know, it's totally amazing that those children, those missionaries were up that mm -hmm. hill um, years back. I, I was going to, I'm planning to do Cross Mountain today. It's mm -hmm. a bit cold, so mm -hmm. I might delay that till tomorrow. We'll see how we go. Mm -hmm. But I'm exploring and I'm open. Wonderful. I think the, the beauty about this place is come with openness, right? Yes. Openness of the heart. Of no? the heart, yes, uh -huh. yes. And how would you describe you converted? What were you before? Pro Protestant? It, or? It's funny, you know, um, I came from a family that my mother doesn't believe. Uh -huh. My father is a Christian but never practiced. Uh -huh. um, he was Methodist. Uh -huh. And so I, I didn't have any religious um, background, nothing. Uh -huh. But there was always a yearning uh -huh. for, for God. Uh -huh. And I, I, I explored all sorts of other religions in the past, mm -hmm. but um, this is where the Lord wants me to be. The Catholic Church is where I am. I've never, I will never ever. Uh -huh. um, Can you explain the beauty of it, of your Catholic faith? Well, one of the one of the things about the Catholic faith is it's universal. So here it is. I go to a church here, and I, I immediately fit in because everything, the, everything is the same. The way we do the mass is the same worldwide. Be you in Africa, in Europe, in Bosnia, in Croatia, same thing. Mm -hmm. So I like, I love the universality mm -hmm. of the church. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I um, became Catholic, mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I married before I came Catholic. I told my husband we have to go back mm -hmm. and marry again. Mm -hmm. Wow, you did that? Yes, I said Amazing. we have to marry in the Catholic Church. Yeah. How did he react? Oh, he was okay with it. Uh -huh. We went back. You have to. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that is not a marriage, right? Yes. And so I had to go through baptism and, and mm -hmm. confirmation as an adult. Mm -hmm. So for me, there's a lot of peace in the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of history. 
both historical and oral. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a very personal thing. People mm -hmm. will listen to us and think we're over the top, but um, no, so not this, at all. I oh, don't think okay, so. but not this is very all. personal, yeah. and uh, the beauty of the faith is. Um, when you open up your heart and you pray, everything com it comes. Mm -hmm. It comes. I see you have a personal relationship with God, with Christ, no? I like to think so. Yeah. How <laughs> I, would I, you describe it? I think that the relationship with Christ is um, one that comes with peace and love. Mm -hmm. If anything jars you mm -hmm. or makes you causes anxiety or makes you worried or unsettled it's not of the Lord okay <laughs> okay yeah so um, spiritual simple spiritual mathematics simple, yeah I think that um, one of the things about Medjugorje that I noticed was Our Lady has been telling us for years mm -hmm. what she's telling us in Medjugorje confession mm -hmm. adoration mm -hmm. Bible mm -hmm. mass fasting. Mm -hmm. I knew this, but why I didn't fast, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Wednesday and Friday, fast on bread and water. Mm -hmm. I knew this all along, but it only yeah. came into my mind to do this while I was here, mm -hmm. the fasting. Mm -hmm. So I know that when I live in Medjugorje, uh -huh. I will always fast Wednesday and Friday now. Even though we've known these messages, we've read them. Yes. But somehow, they're in the background. You, but now I understand the importance of fasting mm -hmm. Wednesday and Friday on bread and water. That was by revelation walking here, or how did you? How I did always you get that knew thought? about it. Yeah. But when I went to the mass, there's mm -hmm. a book mm -hmm. that says the pillars of the of Our Lady of the mm -hmm. Catholic Church in Medjugorje, and I was mm -hmm. like, wow, fasting Wednesday and Friday. I said I always knew about this, but somehow it just my antennas was just, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. raised, like, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. So somehow there was a understanding that moving forward, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. You knew about it, but you never did it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now you have to. So Medjugorje has enlightened me mm -hmm. and brought that into the forefront of my life. Unbelievable. It's so yeah. beautiful. And what would you tell people? What is the beauty about confession? Why is it so central in our faith? I think that... Confession is a way to let it all out, right? None of us are perfect. We will all err. We will all make mistakes. But go out to the Lord, confess your sins, and wash away. Wash everything away. Let the Lord take it from you. Mm -hmm. That cleansing mm -hmm. is so empowering. It's so enriching. Right? So, um, confession is just healing, healing, cleansing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And what would you tell people, maybe somebody says, wow, wow, long time, I'm Catholic, I could go to confession, but he's scared or she's scared about what she did <laughs> to tell the priest. What would you recommend them? Or what you would know, you one of the things, and I, I actually understand that because mm. um, I never used to go to confession regularly. Mm -hmm. I'd go once a year before, mm -hmm. but now I go often. Mm -hmm. um, just go and let the priest know before you even start. Tell the priest, look, Father, I haven't been to confession in a year, two years, three years. Please help me. Make this an easy... Help me through this p confession. And I tell you, these priests, they will help you. You know, even the act of contrition, sometimes I get so nervous, I wouldn't even be able to say it. Mm -hmm. And I said, Father, help me. I, I've forgotten how to say it. I, exactly I my experience your too. Your experience yes. too, right? And the Father will say, okay, say after me. Yes. And we'll say it together. So one shouldn't be scared or, or worried or afraid of confession. Beautiful. You pray the rosary? Oh, yes. Why? Seems so natural for you. You know, it, it's not natural... Um, or convinced, you're convinced. Yeah. You say, oh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, it's not, I, you know, it's, we human beings always find an excuse. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What I found about myself was when I sat down to pray the rosary, mm -hmm. my mind was always wandering. Mm -hmm. So I realized that when I take my rosary and I go for a walk, mm -hmm. that is when I do my rosary the best. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So yes. now, 
when I'm going to the cross mountain uh -huh. or I'm going to mass, uh -huh. I'm doing my rosary. Uh -huh. It's like I'm one of those people that I cannot cut, sit still and do my rosary unless I'm in the church and I'm doing it with other people. Uh -huh. I've realized that my personality, I don't know, maybe I have, I'm not, I just can't keep still. So I walk and do my rosary and I meditate and I'm just going and I'm going. And going. So you have to find the best way to pray that works for you. Yeah. Right. I prayed with like like YouTube in Lourdes or you do that as yeah, well. So you see, like more concentrated like that. Yeah, right? you see some. Yeah, and, and that's what some people do as well. And what does it bring the rosary? Does it have an effect for you praying it? I think the most powerful rosary for me is the um, sorrowful mysteries. Mm -hmm. When you follow Christ through the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. you go through the scourging. Mm -hmm. Then you have the crown mm -hmm. of thorns placed on that head with the blood bleeding. Mm -hmm. Then you have him carrying the cross and going. Then you walk him through Calvary mm -hmm. to the crucifixion. That whole story of Christ, that sacrifice, that pain, that torture. When you say that rosary and you think. Of what Christ went through it is very pulling mm -hmm. you all and, and what I say to people is when you do the rosary imagine yourself there as an observer mm -hmm. right and that how and that sort of brings the picture to life that's totally scriptural for our Protestant friends yes, totally scriptural totally no? scripture and so to, to relive that just reminds you of the sacrifice Christ gave for us to be where we are today. Mm -hmm. So the rosary is very powerful for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Holy Communion, what would you tell you? know, all other, basically they don't say that it's the real body and flesh and blood of Christ. What would you tell people? What is the beauty about Holy Communion? You know, um, for us Catholics, the Communion is the body of Christ. It is the summit of the all of us. It's a very deeply spiritual experience, which a lot of us Catholics actually take for granted. Yes. But as you grow in your faith, mm -hmm. and if you have a chance to come to Medigori, you will know that you are truly blessed to be alive and to taste Christ, to have a part of him on earth. So the Eucharist to me is a bit of heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it affects everyone differently. You know, that's my experience. Well, Tom. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm getting too deep now. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's Thank inspiring. You. Look, I'm listening. <laughs> and just coming back, you said you were not married in the Catholic Church. You I, got married. Mm -hmm. and, and what was the effect of being married? Did, what, did something change? When you got married, for young people, you know, it's out of date to get married in Catholic Church. It's a protection. So, of how would you describe the sacrament? So, we call it, no. So in the Catholic faith, um, I read because <laughs> I mean I had married, I got married, and then I realized, oh, I have a child. He has to go to school. I converted to Catholicism. I became a Catholic, mm -hmm. and then I started reading, and I was like realizing that, oh wow, my marriage is not recognized mm -hmm. until you marry in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. You are marriage is not recognized as a Catholic. Mm -hmm. The effect of that is the, imp the importance of that is knowing that your marriage is consecrated, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, to because God. To God. Yeah. yeah. And the effect of that is knowing that you are in a marriage that is proper, that is fulfilling to the church, mm -hmm. and that is the only way I can grow my marriage, right? Mm -hmm. To do it properly. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, there was no choice. Mm -hmm. Wow, beautiful. There was no choice. And you did know. your husband change on the way? I mean, you got more deep in the faith. How, how did he change? So, so this is interesting. My husband is a cradle Catholic. Yeah. And he's not as. Uh, uh, he calls me hot. Yeah. He says I'm hot. I'm a convert. He's had it all his life. So huh? he's a more calmer Catholic. Yeah. Um, You're on fire. I'm on to say, fire, and yeah. he just looks at me. I'm coming to my degree. I said, "Will you come with me?" He said, "No, no, 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 no." Yeah. But it's okay. One praying partner is fine. 
he we're together and um, we'll survive this together. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I'm hot. Mm -hmm. I'm a hot Catholic. <laughs> He's the cooler hot one. Hot fire, yeah, yes. I see it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of depth. I yeah. am, I am, I am. So. Uh -huh. uh, beautiful, beautiful. And um, maybe also, you know, there are a lot of people here in Medjugorje, they think, how do I find my vocation? How do I find the right partner? What would you tell them out of your life experience? Um, again, it's all very personal. Mm -hmm. The Lord comes to us and the Holy Spirit comes to us in various ways. Mm -hmm. Everybody's experience is different. For me, I would just say, keep praying mm -hmm. and have an open heart. Right? And don't block anything and anybody out because you never know who's going to bless you. Mm -hmm. You never want know where your graces are going to come from. Never look down on anyone. Just have an open heart. Mm -hmm. right? And wish everyone well. And the graces of the Lord and your direction in life will eventually come. Mm -hmm. It will come. It will come. Beautiful. And the last one is like, like you know, everybody's looking for happiness in life. Deep joy, peace. How do mm -hmm. they find it? You found it in the Catholic faith? So that is very good. So one of the things that uh, in life people get, you know, I have a friend who I love very dearly. Her name is Adiswa. She's also Catholic. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about our Catholic faith. And what, and over the years, we've realized that it's the simple things of life that make you happy. You see the designer clothes, uh -huh. the vocations, the living life just to please people, make people happy. It's all temporal. It's not, I'm telling you, the simple things of life. Being able to have good health, get up in the morning, go for a walk, speak to your friends, just enjoy the beauty of simple life. I think in life we just complicate things too much. Uh -huh. We're always trying to please people, we're always trying to outdo other people, always trying to um, get the best cars, the best house, the best jewelry. That is so irrelevant. The simple things. And as I'm getting older, mm -hmm. the simple things are what, are what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Same as me. Same as you. It's unbelievable. It's so beautiful you know, to listen to. Yeah. You know, because people say, oh, oh, there's money here. You can do this. You can get some. I don't, I don't want more. I don't. That's not it. It doesn't. Money doesn't give you happiness. There are people with money, they're in bed, they can't even move. Find Christ, find love, find peace, find spirituality, find the church, find yourself. Peace, love, uh, that's all. How much food can you eat, Tom? How many vacations can you go on? How much jewelry can you wear? How much diamonds can you have? We keep it simple. And I think that's what happens on... You know, the world is so, people are so worldly, they get so distracted, right? So we need to center our lives on the Lord, on peace, on spiritual, on love, on Christ, on mm -hmm. Our Lady. And what would you, would you tell at the end people like, maybe why should they come to Medjugorje so far? What would you tell okay, them? Okay, so that's a very good one, Tom. Why come to Medjugorje? I've been trying to come here for over 30 years and I finally came here because I had this deep sense that you need to go to Medjugorje mm -hmm. and I've been saying it for years to my friends and then suddenly I come what happened in Medjugorje to me and I've only been here since Friday today is Monday mm -hmm. is this heightened spiritual feeling suddenly I'm feeling the Holy Spirit I'm feeling this sense of peace that I've never felt before I feel whole it's very difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm in Mass, I'm crying. There's like spiritual healing going on. I'm feeling complete. I'm feeling that everything I've learned in the scriptures, everything I've learned over these years, has suddenly come together. And I now understand the picture. And I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I don't know it all. I'm not at we all. We are all on the way. I'm still learning. I still have six more days here, and I mm -hmm. intend to do much more. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. That was so beautiful, this interview. You thank know. you so much. Thank you, yeah? Tom. Thank you very much.